Good morning everybody, good morning from Prague and today it's a state holiday so I would like to admit that 8th of May it's the day of uh, celebration of the end of World War II and I would like to take this opportunity when the city is very quiet I would like to invite you for a short walking tour through cubist architecture in Prague. There is a fantastic complex of cubist architecture below the place called Vishera. Let me first turn to me. Hello. So here I am. And what you see behind me, there is a big rock. And upon this rock, there is so-called Vishehrad. So now I will turn back and we'll have a look at it. Well, I should also introduce myself. My name is Ilona. I am Prague tour guide and it will be my pleasure to be your guide on this walk. So, what we are looking at, this is actually a fortress of Vishaharat and that complex of interesting architecture in cubist style is below this uh, Vishaharat. Uh, Vishaharat to most of the locals uh, is the place related to Czech uh, statehood because it was uh, somewhere here that there was a residence of Princess uh, Libuše, this princess. While well, she lived back in 7th century, she had a gift of divination, gift of prophecy. And uh, in one of her dreams, in, her, in one of her predictions of future, she spoke about Prague. By that, Prague, uh, by the time Prague was not in existence, uh, there was only this residence of uh, rulers of uh, this country up on the hill. So, can you imagine somewhere up on the hill, she was standing, looking down into the valley uh, along this Vltava river and she said, I see town the glory of which should reach stars. And then she sent a mission to find a suitable place where to build uh, the town that is now so world famous. Well, uh, there is another story related to this Princess Le Boucher. Once more, let's have a look up. Today it's a big fortress, this place. But here we are by the river. So let me continue the legend about her husband. So the way how to find her husband is quite interesting. Uh, she sent her horse to lead a group of men into the place outside of Prague to Stadice and there they found a handsome man by the name Przemysl and he was brought to this place, residence of Princess Libuše and they got married. This man was called Przemysl. So they got married and that's how so-called Przemyslitz dynasty was uh, started. So Przemyslitz dynasty was the uh, period of time of rulers of the beginning of Czech statehood, even that famous patron saint of this country, Saint Wenceslas, is of this Przemyslitz dynasty. But what I want to show you, look, for many centuries, look at the rock. Look at the road. Uh, to get from this place where we started our tour from Podoli to Podskali on the other side was possible only by walking around the whole this Vishaharat complex or to take a boat, a ferry, around this rock and uh, actually here the water is about the deepest uh, on the on the grounds of uh, Prague. So it was only in 1904 when as a result of the Industrial Revolution the traffic was growing, the first uh, uh, trams and uh, the first vehicles. Here we have one tram coming. This tunnel was created in 1904. Well, it very much helped to get through, but the problem was that there were too many people until these days the traffic is quite heavy. Not on Saturday early morning, but uh, in uh, rush hours of weekdays this is really quite busy. And you see that we also have to walk through. So uh, there were even plans to make one more tunnel, but actually the idea was given up and uh, this has to be enough, but now the, the net, the system of uh, Prague transportation works differently. They are more 
connection. So let's walk through this channel and we'll get into Vyšehrad as a uh, sub-castle area. But back to Vyšehrad. Okay, so it used to be... Maybe I'll wait until I'm out of the tunnel because I think the acoustic is not very good. It used to be the ruler's residence. It used to be even the residence of the very first Czech king in the 11th century, Vratislav the first Czech king. Uh, it was also the used. It was used by King Charles IV, uh, not as a main residence, but Charles IV invented uh, or invested the money into its uh, redevelopment from Romanesque architecture to to Gothic architecture. Well, then Hussites came in 1420, everything was destroyed. Well, 17th century is the time of the Thirty Years' War, and afterwards the fortress up on the hill was converted, or fortress, the former castle was converted into a fortress. And that's what uh, we can see today. Uh, should we look at this uh, from the opposite side of the river, you would realize how monumental it is. But uh, I would like to do a tour of Vyšehrad fortress some other day. Today I want to focus on architecture, cubism. So, back to explanation. Uh, at the end of the 19th century, it's the time of big changes, industrial revolution. And also, uh, there was a need to live uh, more comfortably, and uh, Prague underwent big changes. So-called uh, asanace, or we may translate it as a clearance reconstruction, uh, concerned not only the Jewish quarter, where it was really very well visible, but, but uh, it was also the case of uh, the uh, area on Nafrantišku, but also this Podskari nearby, and also this uh, Vyšehrad. So here under Vyšehrad, uh, old buildings were demolished and they were replaced by new architecture. And here we are looking at first of those that I want to show you. But uh, let me put it in context. When we speak about cubism, we have to speak about that first wave after 19th century uh, historicism architecture, repeating old architectural styles, neo-Gothic, neo-Baroque, neo-Renaissance. So suddenly there was uh, the movement for Art Nouveau, like new styled architecture, like a fresh air coming into uh, the... Sorts of architects, and uh, there was very much an inspiration picked up in uh, natural, his, uh, natural, uh, yes, in the nature, flowers, uh, plants, animals, but also folk art uh, and so on. And because that Art Nouveau was very, very decorative, uh, the like like a protest against that uh, decorativeness, suddenly there is this new wave of cubism, the geometrical forms. Well, the most, uh, or let's say, fathers of the idea are those whom I'm sure you know, uh, Picasso, uh, Pablo Picasso or George Brack, uh, of among the locals, uh, architects, Josef Gochar, painter Emil Fila, and yes, architecture. So Josef Gochar and uh, uh, Josef uh, Hochol, uh, those were about the most significant uh, architects that implemented the ideas of cubism in architecture. So we are now looking at the triple house that was uh, designed by Josef Kochol, and uh, this architect was by the time quite young. He was just a uh, little more than 30. Uh, he just have finished uh, the Brozik's Hall in the newly reconstructed uh, town hall of the old town and uh, looked like he did not have much of the experience, yet he was employed by uh, two builders and uh, the search of those owners of this triple house was a lawyer. So we speak about the names of František Hodek, uh, lawyer Jan Bayer, 
and Antonio Bellada, and all of them entrusted the plans for their new homes to hands of this Josef Chochol. He was born in 1880, and here we can see uh, the architecture that was built in between 1912 to 1913. Uh, I will cross the road because it's quiet, no traffic, and let's have a look at the details of this triple building. So, f from this point of view of architecture, it's really an invention of uh, Prague architects to apply ideas of cubism in architecture, because until then it was in arts, it was in paintings, it was in the applied art, but look at these beautiful details, including the gate, uh, the composition of uh, cobblestones, look at the door of garage, and look at uh, the doors here, the entrance, and up there the windows. Now there are offices, so Saturday morning I assume nobody is here. And just to put it in context, up there you can see two towers of uh, Vyshehrad Church of St. Peter and Paul. But let's continue. Even this gate is interesting because it's separated to these uh, fragments. And let's walk down below. So there are in different colors, symmetrical. Actually, it, walk, it, it, it may be uh, put in parallel with some kind of Baroque uh, residences, uh, means back to 18th century. There you also find some interesting details. So the inspiration was actually geometry plus the previous architecture. Here we are looking at the name Ubayeru. Uh, Byers, the family of Byers, were the owners of this middle part. The door in cubist style is unfortunately in a very, in very bad condition. But let's continue. You see the grill on the windows. And here we have the third part. So by the time when it was built, there were big changes made, everything was redeveloped and there was a place available because older buildings were demolished. So once more, let's have a look at this interesting architecture of cubism. Let's see its details. But yet I find interesting that here in the garden, they have a statue of Madonna and child. It's here. Can you see it? And since it's open, let me show you also this cubist door on the, like a back door of the house. Once more up. It's against the light, so not very well visible. And I will return back and perhaps once more we'll cross to the other side of the road and we'll have a look at this building from the opposite side. So here we are, just as soon as the cars are gone, and meanwhile you can look at the windows. So now it's quiet. It's a lovely morning, sun shining, I'm very glad that the weather gets nice, however it's cold. So once more, when this building by Josef Hochol, architect, was completed. The owners found it uh, interesting, but yet uh, the lawyer's family, Mr. Bayer, wanted to get some extra decorations. So that's what you can see up here by that uh, balcony with the cubist metalwork. So once more. And look at this. So we are speaking about the year 1912 when this was completed. And once more from the distance, I'll try to capture the whole size. Well, actually, not, it's not really quite well possible. So I will continue along the embankment. So you will see it under the angle from the distance. 
the sun is shining. We are not far, we are by the river and look over there in the distance if uh, you can recognize through the metalwork of the bridge there's the cathedral of Saint Vitus. The bridge as such is also interesting because it's from the year 1901. But let's go back. Originally this was the dead end before the bridge was built. So once more the bridge was completed in 19 or four only but until then it was a dead end so there were buildings constructed at the end of the 19th century also facing the river but then when the tunnel was made and the road was extended this front part was demolished and suddenly the reverse side that was not decorative got open and that's what you are looking at at those like balconies nowadays uh, in glass, covered, protected uh, from wind, but uh, in the past times it was that out of sight part of the building. So let's cross again to the other side. Once more you can see those cubist buildings and now we'll have a look at decorative facade of these buildings from the other side. By the way, in a moment I will show you one of possible ways how to approach Vishaharat Fortress. But as I said, the tour of Vishaharat Fortress, I'm going to uh, invite you to uh, some day later. Look how beautiful are the tulips here. Some garages, and if you have a look here, the buildings are decorative, so this was the style how to be uh, presented uh, to uh, like, like open space. But then things changed and uh, this, this, de this decorative site is hidden. In front of us there is another building for the uh, group of uh, sports uh, so, um, Sokol, by the name Sokol, means falcon. It was an uh, organized uh, uh, group for physical exercises started in the 19th century. But the building was gyms and meeting halls for this uh, group of Sokol was built here below Vishehrat only in 1933. So this is a functionalist architecture. So something else and here you can see there's a walkway. That's how one can use it as a shortcut up to up to Vishehrat. But let's return back. This is the street called Nalibushinse and in a moment I will speak about the same name in connection to another interesting building. Three more buildings uh, that uh, similar like that triple house but three buildings by three different architects presenting the development of architecture even though they are in the um, same period. Again we speak about that uh, 19, 12, 19 uh, 13. On our right hand side it's that functionalist building of the sport unit Vishehrat. In a moment you will see Sokol Vishehrat. Here you have the name. And I want to show you, look, these buildings. These ones. And this one, if you have a look up on the top, you find the name Nalibushinse. So the same name as the name of the street where we just came from. And this is like style of Art Nouveau, those uh, ornaments, those decorations, if you have a look at them from this side, they symbolize abundance. This was built for a medical doctor who had his practice, some uh, Dr. Wojciech Mrazek, and he hired uh, very uh, experienced architect who also liked to 
um, experiment with uh, cubism and his name was Emil Králíček. So he, for instance, designed the only street lamp in cubist style, but it's not on our way. It's um, in the city center. It's not below Vyšehrad. So symbol of abundance. And here you can see combination of Art Nouveau with uh, cubist uh, details. So let's have a look once more on this building from the side. Look at the balcony over there. So there are interesting details. And then the next building, it's in cubist style. That's by Josef Chochol, the very same one. And the third one, even though, again, the same time, 1912-1913, but it's uh, the modern style. And we'll have a look at it from the other side. So let's focus on some details. I'll wait until the car drives by and in meanwhile you can have a look at this front facade. So along the road some reconstruction works are in progress. So here you can see the extended part here we have the name of the architect, if you can recognize it's quite inconspicuous. And there is the date, 1912, uh, designed by Emil Králíček. And look at interesting details of the balcony and here in front of cubism on these pillars by the street entrance and there's a garden well, we cannot really see quite well into the garden because all this green is so dense that we cannot look through but here we are coming to absolutely beautiful example of cubist architecture that's not only in building but look at the fence that goes around uh, the garden and look at this building so we speak about Kovařovicova villa the sun is shining to our eyes but I will find some better spot to let you see it so look at it this way so an interesting entrance here from the street and behind it the building in cubist style. Let's get closer and we can look through the gate. So here it is. It's hard to imagine that this originally private house was then under communism converted into a preschool so children used to play in this garden <laughs> and also speaking about uh, the school institutions also the next building sequence house house of mr sequence who was a teacher uh, it uh, served as a nursery uh, school but once more let's have a look at this cubist gem i'm trying to find some good uh, place where you would have a better view perhaps more from the distance where you can see it even with this with this entrance so it's really um, one of the leading examples of cubism in architecture Kovařovicova villa villa built by Mr. Kovařovic and Mr. Sequence was the one who hired <coughs> another famous architect, Otokar Novotny, whose work we can find in the Jewish Quarter, uh, nearby the former Hotel Intercontinental. So this is the modern style, modern architecture, but look over there, it's an interesting view of connection of that cubist style with this 
modern of the same style the it's not common to see uncovered bricks because uh, for architecture of Prague it's common to use a plaster and then paint it in different colors so in this case it's different we'll have a look at it once more here's a nice view from this side of this building you see quite tall and once more we can have a look at that cubist or the connection of all those three buildings so Art Nouveau, Cubism and Modern Style or Modernism it's the same period of time, it's just that the architects had different ideas about how uh, those new details uh, are to be implemented in their designs. So the train bridge from 1901, a bit later, in 1907 over there, the printing house was built. Nowadays it's a Hotel Hermitage. But it was a famous printing house. In the past times it was called, first it was called Unie and then Polygraphie. But now it's a hotel from 2007, so exactly like 100 years after the building was constructed, then uh, it was redeveloped into the hotel. Well, and meanwhile, we walk towards the central street of this Vyšehrad town, which uh, got separated from the uh, chapter of Vyšehrad, because chapter of Vyšehrad was established in the 11th century as a, as a unit uh, uh, from, separated from uh, the bishopry at Prague Castle, and uh, there was a uh, like independent unit established at uh, Vyšehrad, Vyšehrad chapter. And the building that we see in front of us, that's a town hall. So uh, middle of 19th century, uh, redevelopment of the whole town, demolition of fortification walls. There were even some ideas about how to demolish the whole this uh, Vyšehrad fortress, but quite luckily eventually it was preserved and uh, today it's a very interesting place. It's like the walled park. But there was a period of time when it was a military fortress, there was only the army, the people who used to live there were moved away and uh, where they moved? They moved here below into that sub-castle area. So, town hall. Nowadays it's not a town hall because later Vyšehrad became a part of the bigger Prague and the town hall was not needed, so this is actually the special, it's, it's a school, it's an, it's an education center. But interesting idea of the uh, architecture of the 19th century. But let's continue, I want to show you another one, Cubist building, which is not far from here. In the past times, there used to be a tram extension. Trams used to come here and it was until the year uh, 1910, so for about uh, 15 years or so, the tram used to come here. But uh, then it was conducted into another direction and there were two options. Either to abolish the tram completely or to extend it up to Pankrat, so that means uh, the tram would go through the whole that fortress up on the hill. But uh, eventually the plans were changed and Vyšehrad was preserved in that, in that historic appearance. No trams. <clears throat> now we are heading towards the construction site. Unfortunately it's noisy, but there's one more cubist building that I want to show you on this uh, Neklanova street. Later on we'll finish our tour on the same street, but at its opposite end. Let me <clears throat> cross the road and I want to, now it's well lit up, let me show you this building. It's another example. Uh, this is uh, 1913 a house also designed by Josef Hochol, maybe less decorative, 
but look at the door look at details below the roof I'm moving it up and if you can distinguish there is a there is an interesting window up there also in that like star shaped form so that's another one but quite ugly is the building right next to it from the time of the communism so frankly they really do not match together but who knows how this new one looks like when it is uh, completed i mean the one behind me so neklanova street and now let's walk through the once uh, independent town of Vishehrad here below the castle but let's move on from this noisy place and we are going to enter the street that bears the name of the first Czech king Vratislav as a duke he was Vratislav II as a king crowned in 1085 he was the first king of this name but there was a little problem with his title he got it as a reward for good services uh, help and support to Emperor Henry the fourth he got that title only for himself he could not pass it to anybody else this street is named after him and we can also find him let's see there is a symbol of Czech kingdom but there is also the symbol of Vishaharat if you can recognize I don't know how much clear it is so in between those towers you may see a man sitting and that's a portrait of that King Vratislav II so school today but the town hall in the past times right next to it there was the first bank constructed because there are quite rich people living here different entrepreneurs uh, different business people and they had the money and uh, this was uh, the like cooperative banking center uh, they built it in 1909 and uh, it was even robbed in 1930 however the policeman found uh, the burg uh, bur burglars uh, the next day and the money were returned uh, after uh, world war ii it was nationalized and all it became state-owned so it was an official robbery and uh, shortly afterwards it was given to Czechoslovak Hasside Church so there is a prior room of Czechoslovak Hasside Church and you can recognize the chalice with a cross on the on the door chalice with a cross on the door the building next to it it's of the same time or same little later uh, 1910 somewhere there is a date we'll have a look at it in the style of neo renaissance with those uh, decorative gables actually also that savings bank has the similar decoration and here we have the date 1910 so have a look at it it's it's here yep yeah, 1910 it's visible right now so it was like a students students uh, shelter like a like a hostel like a dormitory well when it's when you hear the bell only once it means it's quarter past when it's twice it's half past when it's three times it's quarter two four times the full hour and then you can count strikes to learn what time it is so let's continue there are a couple of more of cubist buildings that i want to show you so on vratislava street in the past times there were much smaller buildings here one of them is still in existence and i want to show you that house it's we are nearby but i want to show you that uh, building from the opposite side of the road because it's better visible in meanwhile 
We are actually passing the building of the local school with the Czech flag, flag of European Union, symbol of Prague in the middle, and hidden below the flags there are the names of Jan Amos Komensky and František Doucha, who were considered to be teachers, Komensky teachers of nation, nations, and Doucha teachers, teacher of Czechs. So elementary school in front of us from the end of the 19th century. So you see that uh, this was an important center where they had their own school, they had their own savings bank, they had their own town hall. And there was also the poor house and it's the only one, more or less the only one, preserved in the original architecture that used to be here in two floors only. It's the one we are looking at, but I'm trying to find find a location where you could see it better in the whole size. So like this one, you see the buildings next to this building are much higher and this one is the only small one. Once there used to be a bakery, but uh, the provost of Vyšehrad chapter by the name Wojciech Rufer was the one who purchased the building of bakery and he converted it into a poor house. So it started to serve this uh, purpose in 1865. And because his first name was Wojciech, uh, you can recognize the statue of Saint Wojciech or in Latin Adalbert above uh, or by the, by the roof on the top of the building. That's Saint Wojciech patron saint of this country. But now let me show you these buildings. It's a neo-Gothic style building with lovely details. Look at these statues up there and also look at this decoration. It's the end of the 19th century that or the that very beginning of the 20th century when the national revival was bringing back uh, history, legends, stories, uh, important historic uh, events. So look at, look at these decorative uh, uh, ornaments uh, in shapes of the couple guarding here the entrance to the house. And right next to it, there is a famous, famous uh, beer hall, Hostinets u Zlaté Kotvy, by the Golden Anchor. And you can find anchor, which is far not golden, hanging here. Yes, below the balcony. And also by the entrance, right here. Anchor. So during the daytime when it's open, even though restaurants are not open as such, it's that window shopping, meaning uh, not looking through the window, but but uh, selling from the door or from the window, uh, even though uh, it's not permitted due to coronavirus, but yet there are many people who come here to have a drink and hang around. In meanwhile, look at these buildings. So these are houses built for uh, condominium of the cooperative of the name Equality. Uh, this was designed by Bohumil Hipschmann in between 1919, 1919, five years uh, in progress until 1924. And I will make a few steps ahead because there are, there's this larger complex and there's one more separated. We are heading towards the one where you can recognize those cubist details. Look by the windows, look at those decorations by the windows. That's very typical for that cubist uh, style. But it's that second wave of cubism, that first wave, the strongest was before World War I started. So from approximately 1911 up to 1914 and 
then World War I interrupted most of these activities and uh, it was only <clears throat> only after the war when the second wave came and this is the example. That's how the entrance looks like. See also not coming out but sort of like into the building and once more details and I would like to turn aside and show you a hidden access to Vishaharat. By the way this big road was made in the second half of the 19th century because until then there was the whole net of small narrow streets. Here you can find interesting the pillars that the part of the building is on the pillars and we can walk through and we'll have a look at these buildings from the other side and use this as a shortcut. I like personally I like the uh, windows along the staircase along the spiral staircase leading through the building and I think it's an interesting moment again related to cubism and once more these buildings from the other side and this is where we came from this is where we came from and you can recognize those cubist details by the windows it's quiet birds are singing flowers blooming so this is a secret passageway not so secret before this was all redeveloped once when there was a medieval castle up on the hill this was the direction of the road leading towards Prague castle only in the 19th century the disposition of these streets was changed look at the flowers look at the tulips Oh, no, 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 it's, it's what I want to show you, this way, tulips here, but maybe we'll see them without the fence, I will return back, okay, so this way, these lovely yellow flowers, I even don't recall the name of it, but it looks very pretty, and look into the garden, down here, also, flowers and tulips and well these steps are quite high <coughs> we are getting closer to this big fortress of Vishaharat and there's a playground you can see the fortress is quite the walls are from the 17th century with some redevelopment from uh, 1700s when the French army uh, occupied Prague and settled here in this fortress. Then later Prussians got in and when they were leaving when they were leaving the Prussians wanted to explode the whole thing but quite luckily there was a group of locals who had learned about it in the last moment and they managed to stop all this what we could call terrorist act. So the walls are still here here we are walking along the walls of Vishaharat fortress. From the 19th century there is this so-called brick wall. It was built together with this new road. So the ground plan of the town really changed and it's called Prague Gate. It used to be called Jerusalem Gate later on brick gate and that's one of the ways how to enter fortress former fortress of of Vishaharat. once more let me there is a possibility here to see the ground plan of uh, Vishaharat. you see the name in writing So, well, 
Here we are, Vratislavova Street, where we saw those cubist houses. We took a shortcut. We are by this, by this gate. This is the one, number 38. 38, let's find it, the brick Prague gate. There's an information center and access to corridors and tunnels that lead through the fortress. You can see the window here on the left of the gate. So those corridors, they lead through all these walls. And now we return back to Vratislav Street. And in a short while, I will show you the last of the cubist buildings. But in order to reach that last gem of cubist architecture, We have to walk through this road. It's quiet, you see, nobody, nowhere. <laughs> Streets empty. So here we are returning to the street where we earlier came from using that shortcut. Again, Vratislavova Street, named after King Vratislav, who was crowned in uh, 1085, and he built a Romanesque castle upon the hill, established Vyshehrad chapter, uh, built uh, the first church of Saints Peter and Paul. Uh, he built uh, <coughs> also Church of St. Lawrence, uh, Church of St. Martin, which is actually in existence still these days. Well, what else? So he was very, very active, but actually then uh, about seven years later he died and that was the end of kingdom because that uh, title of a king was given to this ruler only for his own person. So it was only later in the uh, 13th century when the kingdom was confirmed and uh, then it became a matter of uh, heritage. So now from Vratislavova Street we are going to turn to Przemyslova Street. Przemysl, yes, that was that legendary husband of Princess Libusha. We are going to see some reliefs with the motifs of these legends. These buildings are from a little later over there. There's a date, 1923. I will show you in a moment. So one of those historic reliefs, it's right here. And actually the one that, that's the arrival of Przemysl to Princess Lebusche. And uh, here we have how the mission from Princess found this plowman. You see, it was a plow on the field in Stadice, but it's quite far outside of Prague. So you can recognize this motif. And up there, there's a date, 1923. I hope you can read it. So now in just a few steps from here, there is a gem of Cubist architecture. It's here on our left hand side, but let's go down and let's have a look at it under the proper angle. Once more, Josef Hochol, architect who designed this interesting building. Look at these pillars on the corner. That part is lit up by sunshine. Look at the door. Look at the door. So this is the gem of cubist architecture in Prague, but we'll have much better view when we get a bit into the distance. So I'm approaching Neklanova Street. You can see the construction site at the end of the street. So there's one more cubist building. And here I'll try to get 
into the distance as much as possible. I would like to let you see, if possible, the whole size of this cubist building. So about about this, but further on I actually get on the road and I don't want to be run over by cars. So here you are looking at the building which uh, is the highlight uh, 1913 Josef Chochol that uh, avant-garde architect designed this uh, building. So it's an apartment house there used to be a restaurant down here, now it's empty. Let's hope that in the future there is a restaurant back again. We saw one door from the side. Let's have a look at the building from this side. There's an interesting door designed in that cubist style. Look at the door. Once more you can take a glance, I'll try to show you the building from this side as well. So unusual, very important. Eventually it came out that cubism uh, sort of exhausted itself in these uh, details and the architects uh, continued then in style of uh, functionalism, <coughs> modernism, constructivism and other isms but this was a very interesting uh, period of this kind of experiment in architecture and it's really unique you cannot find it anywhere else in in uh, the world that the cubism would be represented this way so that's the end of my tour I hope that one day you come back and maybe you'll come to see, uh, you come to see uh, these uh, buildings and this architecture on your own eyes because now you can see it through my camera but uh, the ideal would be if you come and, and see it uh, on your own. <clears throat> In closing I would like to thank you for watching my tours. I would like to send my warmest regards to Tammy Raffaele and uh, her family to Eva Krupp from Canada, from uh, Fayas Rasul who is watching me very often, uh, Olaf from Germany, Ivica Medvesek, uh, Miss Delphine and many others. So thank you very much, stay healthy. I will just uh, switch to my side to say... So here I am and I wish you to have a nice day, stay well, stay healthy and uh, I hope to see you soon in Prague. Goodbye.